Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to my studio. Today, we paint a 3D printed Gamak miniature shipped all the way from Italy. That's good. I will try to explain underpainting in this video and some people call actually call priming as underpainting. I have a ton of videos on how to prime with surface primers and mecha primers and do check them out. Basically, I thin primers, one part primer and one part thinning sauce and use a 0.4 airbrush at 20 ish PSI. The Infinity airbrush is too good for just a priming airbrush but once you go Infinity, it's hard to go back. So let's talk underpainting. So basically underpainting, usually I call it zenithal priming or zenithal painting. Zenithal technically is you like simulate a source of light, usually from the top. And you paint lighter colors on top and the undersides of the model remain black. I think underpainting is borrowed from fine arts or painting like painting on paper and canvas because I'm like a watercolor artist since I was 12 years old and we do underpainting especially use watercolors as underpainting for like colored pencils and such. So underpainting is not just like black and white or black primer and then gray and white primer on top of that but it's actually a foundation for the succeeding paints so that you create volume before even before you add the colors so black and white underpainting or pre-shading in fine scale modeling is basically like your pre-shading so you do shading you create volume with just basic colors or basic paints even black and white so why most people use even me black and white most of the time because it's the safest it's neutral and you could put different colors on top of black and white So pre-shading or doing underpainting in black and white is the safest because it won't affect the other colors that you will be putting on top of the model. You could see here though that I went against the usual black and white underpainting because I simply want my video to be revolutionary. <laughs> so kidding aside, underpainting is a very powerful like step in producing variations in your model painting and I highly recommend you play around with different underpainting. Also, we talked about color or hue contrast in hues and stuff like that. You'll see later why I chose a warm undercoat. We are going for a greenish rotting flesh here with a lot of wounds and stuff like that. So you'll see how we play around with the colors and the use so that we create a more interesting model in no time. So we mix brown ink and green ink producing an olive greenish paint. Also we added glaze medium because inks are very very saturated and we want to slowly build up the colors also the glaze medium will soften the inks it will like eliminate the harshness of the inks and it won't like produce very harsh or very nasty watermarks as you can see we're creating better volume or a model with more depth because we use warm as underpainting and then painted green on top of that so it gives like a more interesting transition actually even if you paint normal skin normal flesh tones if you've noticed like if you paint flesh tones on top of black primer you'll tend to produce like gray flesh on the darker sides of the model which is like it's not nice so here since we use german brown on top of the black primer 
and we painted flesh tones on top of the German brown before we did the glazing of the inks. You could see the transitioning of the greens towards the like very warm red brown shadow parts. After just two thin coats, we're kind of good to go. Now we mix a bit of flesh wash or flesh ink and red ink. This will produce a gum color like the color of your gums. So sorry, it's kind of gross, but that's what we're aiming for. So I said this in my previous like glazing videos, if you add glaze medium to the inks or the paints, you create a filter like paint. So it filters really well. Unlike if you add more water or inks, it will be too runny and it tends to like settle around the crevices or details of the model. So if you need to filter or alter the color of the model, you add mediums, you make subtle transitions by doing this, but the paints itself or the inks are not like settling around the details and crevices of the model. So using inks or paints with glaze medium, the key here is the glaze medium, is the most effective or efficient way to glaze or filter your models. At least if you are a Vallejo painter. Because if you do citadels or you have citadel paints, that will be the contrast paints. Of course, you could filter with just washes, but it's not as efficient and also washes tend to like settle around crevices and details so really it's not very efficient. Notice I usually use older brushes like for the glazing and the washes and the inks and the mediums but it's partially wrong if you say that mediums and washes ruins Kolinsky brushes. So it's not the composition of these paints, the inks, glazes, and washes that ruin the brushes or the Kulinsky brushes. It's because they're thinned or over-thinned and thus they run towards the ferrule, the metal part of the brushes, which will ruin the brushes. So the chemical composition of the washes and inks, much more the pigments or I mean the glaze mediums, it's not actually or not directly ruining the brushes, it's their runniness because they tend to go straight to the ferrule. So I recommend you use like older Kolinsky brushes or even the cheaper like synthetic brushes. But to be honest, much like the Infinity Airbrush, once you go Kolinsky, it's hard to go back to synthetic. So now you saw in the video, we're kind of defining the details of the model with black green. I highly recommend all of the inks, especially the black green because it's awesome. Now we add more definition with sepia. I rarely use black because it's practically because of my background with watercolor painting. We rarely use black unless it's like the pupil or the really darkest part of the hair. So anyway, it's my background but you could use black ink or black wash. And also as much as I want to compare the sepia wash or the sepia ink with agrac shade, it's kind of different. The sepia is a bit more yellowish and it's darker. So the sepia ink wash is adding more definition or making the details of this model pop more and also it's kind of making the brown parts that are not the skin parts darker so that once we paint the highlights or the base colors it will have more volume later. Hopefully I showed in this video and told you in this video that underpainting is not just black and white. We don't really want to bring out the color wheel here and like flex my fine arts degree <laughs> but it's basically using contrast in use or color so that you produce a more interesting model. So experiment with different underpainting and paint better models. 
that's it. We're done. I hope you liked the video. Do like, comment, subscribe, and consider joining the channel so that you'll be part of our Discord community. Saludos! Thank you.